each of these 25 cups in my current exhibition um, represent a different time, a different technique, a different place in the world. When talking about stoneware, we have about, well, at least 3,000 years of history. Um, most of that not in Europe, though. Uh, yeah. So I'll try to tell you a little bit about each of these cups now. Let's start. So, this cup is a dark stoneware clay. It's anagamma fired. Anagamma is a kiln type that has roots way back into history. Um, wood fired, and this pot is fired for four days. But it hasn't seen a lot of the flame though, a lot of the fire, because it's been fired inside a saga. A saga is more or less a clay container where I put this cup and its friends in. And I wrapped each one of them into uh, with straw and then fired them. So instead of making the flame from the large fire affect the pots, it's the smoldering parts of organic material that makes all the colorings. So for instance you have this line here where you even can imagine the, imagine the straw and this scorch mark where it's turned into a glaze and this red base where it's clearly happened something different from here and this dark patch here. I like the shape of this one rather firmly on, on the it sits firmly on the tabletop with a small 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 foot making it hover just a bit over making a soft shadow underneath and I, I like that feel delicate feel so when talking about anagamma fired pots pots that have uh, been fired for many days sometimes using as much as uh, 25 cubic meters of wood and that's uh, roughly what a house would use in one, one and a half year to heat itself. Uh, the clay and glaze effects uh, gets changed a lot during the time. So with an anagamma fired pot you'll usually see at least two sides. One side uh, that's been facing the fire during the process and one side that's been facing the chimney so to speak. So in this case this is the fire side and it's been the chimney side. So on the fire side we have a higher temperature, a lot more flame and specifically a lot more ash that sticks to the pot and reacts with the glaze or actually the vitreous slip in this case that turns into a glaze with the help of ash and starts to pour down the side here. This is a fairly light stoneware clay and a vitreous slip on top on the inside and up to this point. You can see how the flame has moved through the kiln making a flowing pattern turning the clay bluish and reaching down a little bit into the cup here on the inside but not all the way down. So you have all these effects uh, all the way around the pot. So um, when talking about vitreous slips, I've found that these are interesting to work with because as you fire the kiln, you actually add an element to them, turning them sometimes into a glaze and sometimes leaving them more or less like a clay. So this is another example with the chimney side and the front facing the fire. And you can see how it turned the vitreous slip into a glaze and it started to pour down, making a small droplet that actually made this pot stick to the shelf. So I had to break it loose 
telling a clear story of the, the kiln's harshness, more or less. On the back side here, you have also have some gold and crystals created during a reduction fired cooling, turning them just this color. Mm. This cup is not fired in an Anagama kiln, but another wood-fired kiln. A lot shorter time, not four days or five days, but ten or twelve hours. It's made on the wheel. Um, two clays mixed, but actually it's one clay. We're taking a part away and added a little bit of stain, cobalt in this case. And then not wedging those two clays together completely, just putting them together on the wheel head. And while turning it, they will spiral up like this. As you can see. You can actually see on the base here where I've trimmed out the base. You see more or less how it looks like before turning, so to speak. How the ball or clay I put on there looked. It's been fired in a stack and um, that makes the inside untouched by flame as you can see and you see an intermediate area where it's turned orange and as one of these cups has been, has been underneath here it's also shielded the side as you can see quite clearly making an interesting effect. This blue color it's not from cobalt as this though, it's from the flame reducing the clay so heavily that it turns blue during the firing. I think I would like to drink something clear from this cup. This is also a vitreous slip on top of a dark stoneware clay, fired in a wood kiln but with salt. So when firing with salt you throw salt into the kiln and it, it will react with the clay. As it won't stay salt as we know it, it will become a salt fume that flows through the kiln and reacts with the clay. This is the front side where a lot of salt has hit and you can see it looks one way here and differently all the way around. It's turned and thrown and I've done a small wavy line all the way around to catch the flowing slip as it's turning into a glaze and making this rather nice pattern here. If you look closely you can see small crystals created during the cooling of the firing. About a thousand degrees Celsius or so, um, this pot was only grey or greyish and you can see that underneath here. But these crystals started to evolve as oxygen entered the kiln, turning the kilns and the crystals not grey but yellow, goldenly green. It's been fired on three wadding uh, balls and that's just a very refractory uh, clay rolled into balls and put on the feet here and put on the shelf in the kiln because in, in a salt firing every piece of clay becomes sticky and glazed so you'll have a hard time removing the pot if you don't use waddings of some sort <laughs> 